Hey guys, Light in here, and thank you for checking out this video, and I hope you found it in a completely strange, random, and nonsensical way, because, as a perfect segue should be, today I want to talk about a point-and-click adventure called The Secret of Monkey Island, and see if it's worth it. The Secret of Monkey Island was released in 1990 for the Amiga and computers and PC and MS-DOS and all those different kinds of things that were around back in the day. It was made by a company called Lucasfilm Games who, if the name didn't give it away, is a subsection of Lucasfilm. Yeah, George Lucas, you know the guy that created Star Wars? He also created a gaming company, that's pretty cool. Lucasfilm made many games in the late 80s and early 90s and were held to a high regard for their pointed click adventures. This game was made by some pretty big legends as well. Ron Gilbert, who was famous for Maniac Mansion, Tim Schafer, who did Grim Fandango and Psychonauts, and Dave Grossman, who used to be one of the co-owners of Telltale, which is pretty crazy. The three then put their heads together and came up with a story about Guybrush Threepwood, a pirate wannabe. He comes to Melee Island to chase his dreams of being a pirate. Here he meets the pirate lords that assign him three tasks. Complete them and you're an official pirate. Pretty easy, right? These tasks aren't so easy, including stealing from the governor. It doesn't help that as soon as Guybrush sees Governor Elaine, he is smitten. But what's going to make it harder is that there is an evil pirate named LeChuck on the seas and rumor has it, he's a ghost! Can Guybrush live his dream of being a pirate? Will he get the girl and stop the evil LeChuck? I've also gone this long without even mentioning Monkey Island, so what kind of secret could it be hiding? It's time to point and click to find out. The Secret of Monkey Island is a point and click adventure, but what does that even mean? It's exactly how it sounds. On the screen you will have a cursor and you point it at different things and when you press the button you will interact with those. Point and click. I talked about another point and click video on my channel before with the Goosebumps uh, you know, video game which is also a point and click so you can go and check that out for another version of this type of game. As this is more of an older point and click adventure they have the verb system in place. In the bottom section of the screen you'll have many different actions or verbs that you can use in order to interact with the environment, such as push or pull, talk to or open. Using these different words and then selecting something will have different effects, so saying talk to a door, Guybrush will probably just say something silly like you can't talk to a door, but if you say push a door or maybe open a door, it'll open. and. There you go. You can talk to different things, you can interact with different things, and using these verbs with the items and the people in the environment is how you're going to get through this game. The other thing is that you could sort of control Guybrush by clicking on different items or objects or areas and making him walk to those spots. This can become important because you have to get to new screens or you have to be standing in a specific place for one of the puzzles. The two main things in every point and click style game is its story and its puzzles. So let's start with the story. It's a fairly simple tale of a man trying to follow his dreams with a bad pirate and some supernatural elements thrown in. But it also gets very crazy with the humour and the wacky situations that Guybrush actually gets himself into, like dueling with insults and comebacks instead of actually trying to hit them with your sword. Or having alcohol so potent that it literally melts the mug that it is put in if you do not drink it fast enough. How is that good for your health? There are many, many different strange things in this game and listing them all would just be pointless. If you were to just focus on the main story, the whole game can be completed within a few hours, but it all depends on two things, like how good are you at solving the puzzles and how much of the world do you want to explore. There are many people in this game that you can talk to that have no correlation to the main game or anything like that. They either just offer a hint or some kind of joke or something along those lines. They don't contribute to anything. If you skipped all of those, then yes, you will get through the game much faster. If you're clever at solving the puzzles, then yes, you'll get through the game much faster. So the length of the game will definitely vary per player. So let's go on with the puzzles because that is the second main part of these games. For some reason, point and click adventures have some puzzles that are just ridiculously crazy and take a little bit of a jump in logic in order to solve, and we do have some here. While I said you don't have to talk to everyone, you probably will talk to everyone over the course of the game because you don't know who has a clue or who will be pertinent to the puzzle that you are trying to solve. 
And that's the main thing about this game. Many people that you talk to will have some kind of request that you will have to fulfill. For this, you will be finding a plethora of different items and using each of them in different ways with the environment and different people. By using the right item at the right time, something will happen, which will advance the plot usually. Sometimes this is a new item for another puzzle or a cutscene. Now, when I first played through this game, I played through it blind, and I have to say, I'm not particularly good at point and click adventures. The leaps of logic that you have to take and sometimes have to remember what all people want and how they interact, it's just, there's a lot to remember and a lot to do and sometimes even doing some things just doesn't make any sense and that's the actual way to progress. Because of this, I had no idea what I was doing for the majority of the game. Even though the puzzles start off fairly easy, they do get a little bit more difficult pretty early on, and by the end of the game, they are so ridiculously crazy. Now, because you'll be getting a lot of items and there's a lot of people to talk to and interact with, you'll be trying everything everywhere. Early on in the game, you get an item called a rubber chicken with a pulley in it. Now, because this is a point and click adventure, you have to use that item somewhere, right? Well, uh, this game takes quite a while before you use it, and it's in a particular scene that you have to use it in, and it's very obvious where you use it. The thing is, is that I had this item in my inventory for a while, so I used it practically everywhere. I tried it on everything and everyone. Sometimes this led to some of the humorous conversations and stuff like that in the game, but I was baffled. What do you do with this thing? And that's a little bad, because you aren't given super like ma um, amounts of directional hints in this game even though there are some with some of the dialogue that you can have there aren't so many guiding forces to get you to the next uh, puzzle or to the next area so you really do have to just try everything everywhere and that is my main complaint about point and click adventures as a whole but there is a little bit of a difference here i was having fun Regardless of if I knew what I was doing or not, talking to all the different people was fun. There are many times where I would get a funny line or something expected happen. I got to know Melee Island and quite a few of its inhabitants, which made the puzzles fun because even if I was stuck, the people were there to entertain me. Something a little unique about this game is the fact that you cannot die. And that is unique because a lot of the adventure games that came out around this time, you could die. Doing something wrong, making a wrong move or a wrong choice will result in your character's death and if you hadn't saved the game, you could lose so much progress and have to do the same puzzles again. This annoyed the creators when they were making Monkey Island because the other video games, if you died, you just have to do the same thing again. And instead of it being based around puzzles, this was more based around memory. They didn't like this, so they took out all deaths in this game, bar one, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so because of this, there's a point in the game where you are looking over an edge and the edge uh, of a cliff breaks and you fall down. And then a message box comes up saying, you died. <laughs> uh, if you did not save your game, then oh well, uh, you know, bad luck for you. You'll have to go back and play through the whole thing again. And then just as you're watching, reading the screen, you're like, oh man, I can't believe I died. Guy brush pops back up. He just comes in from the, the side that he fell off and then he just says, huh, rubber tree. This is so silly and funny and it's just there to make fun of these uh, other adventure games that you could die in. The only time that you can actually die is uh, at one point in the game you're underwater and it's a very easy to solve puzzle, but if you stay there for 10 minutes straight, Guybrush will die. And it's more of an Easter egg than anything else. It feels like, well, you tried really hard to get him to die, will allow you this one little death scene. And that's it, that's the only time he can die in the series. This sense of freedom really helps with the game because you know that while there will be consequences for your actions, they will not stop you from progressing in the game. When you're trying to solve a puzzle, you know that you won't die, so you can try anything and everything and not have to fear the fact that you will lose any progress. While I mentioned the rubber tree joke, there are quite a few other jokes like that. A lot of them make fun of the game and the player, like the infamous stump joke. As games used to come on floppy disks, yeah, even before CDs, we had floppy disks, you might need multiple disks to fully install a game. 
At one point in the woods, you can inspect a stump and it teases you with a hidden cavern and it asks you to insert other discs like 112. But there aren't that many discs with the game. <laughs> this caused a lot of people to call up LucasArts saying that they were missing discs and it caused a whole lot of strife and backlash. People just didn't get the joke right away. Because of that, the game took it out of any future releases though and it is joked about in later games. Let's talk about the graphics of the game. You might look at it and go, man, that's some pretty crummy graphics, but I would say no, they are actually very good. In the time that this came out, 1990, this is really impressive. They didn't have too many colors to use with only the 256 color palette, but I think the sprite work and animation here is gorgeous. I like the backdrops, I like the fun, unique parts that you get to go into, all the different rooms and the different areas have unique feels to them. The character models are fairly good for the most part, though I will concede that sometimes when they get a bit smaller in the background, their faces are a little bit weird and bad, so it's not all great great, but I think it is quite impressive for the time. The music to the game is also really cool with its Caribbean style that permeates the entire thing. Because from start to finish you will have all different areas to explore and all different kinds of locations, the music helps tie it all together because it all feels kind of the same. Even though you're in a cavern or in a forest or in a city, that feel to the music makes it feel like it's all part of one world and I have to say it's really well done. In 2009, 19 years after the original release, the game was remastered and called a special edition. This remaster went all out, converting all of the graphics that you see on screen to full 1080 and changing it to a hand-drawn style instead of pixelated. The characters were also redone to resemble their more cartoony versions that would become the staple in the later parts of the series. The music was remastered and the sound effects were as well. A few deleted parts were added back in, such as the close-up of the dog that you can talk to at the start of the game. They removed the verb system from the original, but changed it instead to icons that you can see when you go to select a different object. They also added voice acting to the entire cast, which is pretty cool. While 95% of the dialogue stayed the same, a few little parts were changed and a few more were added in. They also added in some more background people talking so you have a little bit more world and you just have some random people talk while you're walking through. What's best is that they also added a button that you could push to switch to the old art style and verb system. So if you prefer that, you can play the game in its original-ish format. Lastly, they added a hint system of what to do next, helping out dumb people like me. <laughs> it is greatly appreciated. In my opinion, I think that The Secret of Monkey Island is worth it. It is one of the best point and click adventure games out there ever made in my opinion. The characters are fun, the setting is fun, the humour is fun, the whole wackiness and silliness of us all is just really fun to go through. I enjoyed this game so much. While I did play it when I was younger and I never finished it because I'm not super great at point and click adventures, the special edition adds so much to the game. So when I saw it on the Xbox Live, I bought it instantly and I was so happy with the purchase because I loved the new art style, the voice acting and the hint system. That hint system alone allowed me to finish the game. So I'm very thankful for that. So guys, tell me what you thought about The Secret of Monkey Island. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think the special edition was any good. I personally loved it because I love the new art style and the new verb system and the new hint system. I think it was really well done and a lot of love was put into it. But what did you think? Do you think the original better or is it the remaster that's better? Or eh, it doesn't really matter as long as you get to experience the game. That's what I think. Anyway, also tell me what your favorite Monkey Island game is. I think there's like five official games in the series. So let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to suck and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Today I'm talking about <coughs> coughing and how it's annoying. The bright colors towards the end of the game. It has a lot of stuff going for it and I just rambled for too long and I should have ended it so this is a bad take.